Hello everyone and welcome. Today's video I'm going to break down everything you need to know in order to get to the boss fight by round 2 on Ancient Evil. Here's the setup that we used in our games. We used power kegs, refreshments, dividend yields, and point drops. And there's a couple free slots for elixirs that you can bring of your own choice. And you'll see why. Now as soon as you spawn in, you're going to have one player hit their dividend yield and the other three players dropping their point drops to him in order to gain points and also gain a specialist. And as soon as everybody has their specialist ready, we're going to go ahead and do the amphitheater lockdown. It's very important during the amphitheater lockdown that you actually don't kill any of the skeletons or the zombies in order to keep the round from flipping after the lockdown. What you're going to need to do is have one player use their special weapon to despawn the three skeletons while the other two players are going to start rounding up the zombies that spawn in and they're going to despawn those zombies as soon as they have a good pile and the last player is going to come in with their specialist and try to clean up any kills that they missed. To keep the round from changing on you, you're going to have to despawn a minimum of 24 zombies during the lockdown, including the skeletons and the zombies that run from the stands. If you've done this correctly, the round will not change on you on round one, and you're going to have more than 24 zombies on the map. You can go ahead and run out the rest of your dividend yield and have the players drop their points on you. After that, one player is going to hold all the zombies in the amphitheater and two other players are going to go ahead and take out the big guy because he can actually kill zombies and take away from the round count which will start the bleed out time. Well now that you've got at least 24 zombies on the map, you've killed the big guy and run out your dividend yield, you can go ahead and open up the rest of the map and start working on the tribute challenges. Some of the best tribute challenges to do are some of the ones that hold the position and you can go ahead and start dropping the rest of your points off to people while you're doing that. One important thing to do also is if you get a handle in this top area, you need to go ahead and start the Hand of Gaia and you can actually use any of those zombies that spawn in from that first beginning circle on other tribute challenges like headshots and melee damage but you're gonna need the first level of that hand ready for after the Pegasus ride. When you take the Pegasus ride down to Pack-a-Punch, as soon as you spawn in down there, that's going to start a 10 minute timer where the round is going to end after 10 minutes no matter what you do, and we haven't found a way to stop this from happening. So you need to be ready to get all the way up to the sundial step where you're putting electric zombies into that by then. keep Pegasus from killing all the zombies that you have, you're going to have to round them up away from the circle. When everybody rides Pegasus, just have the zombies close enough where they're not going to be killed from Pegasus, but far enough away that they don't despawn and start spawning in on you. Now, as soon as you land, you have 10 minutes to get everything done up to the point where you're putting the electric zombies into that sundial step. So as soon as you get down here, don't open up any doors, and you need to have one player stay in this water area and train up as many zombies as they can, because you're going to start killing them with the hand of Charon in order to get that upgrade going. While one player goes down the other side, and despawns the skeletons, opens one cage, and then the other player goes down and opens up the other cage and kills the big guy in order to start the pack a punch lockdown. All the skeletons that spawn in during the pack a punch lockdown, if you pull your specialist out on them, you'll despawn them and they'll turn into round zombies. So right here, after I got the, the first gauntlet built, 
He has all these zombies ready for me so that I can start killing them right away in order to get on to the next step where I'm collecting coins. And while all this is going on, everybody else has got a pack of punch turning the skeletons into zombies and getting that ready to go. Now another thing, the other gauntlet that requires kills is that blue gauntlet. You don't need to worry about that on round one. You can actually take care of that on round two. As long as you have more than 24 zombies made, when you kill a zombie, it's not going to take away from the 24. It'll actually spawn back in the map. And as long as you maintain a minimum of 24 zombies on the screen, the round is not going to flip on you. Everything looks <clears throat> different now. Unholy, twisted, demented. This is our boss, is the world. As I'm collecting these coins, they're finishing the pack a punch lockdown and getting rid of any of the skeletons that are left over and turning them into zombies. And one thing that we noticed is any leftover zombies that we make, all of the extra ones, when the round flips on its own, those are actually going to carry over onto the next round. So when this goes from round one to two, all of the extra zombies that we made that we didn't actually kill are going to carry over and we're going to maintain a count of more than 24 zombies. During this lockdown, they've already had Pack-a-Punch finished, and everybody else is up on the top side of the map doing the oil stains and getting that step of the easter egg done so that as soon as I'm done with this, I can come out, go back up top, and start to look the dead in the eye step. And that's also going to cause skeletons to spawn in that you can despawn and add even more zombies onto the board for you. I believe you're going to get a around six skeletons per statue that you shoot and you got to shoot four statues so if done everything right you should have anywhere between 40 to 60 zombies added on to your round total for round two which is going to make it possible for you to do that blue fist to kill a couple zombies without making the round change on you So they just finished that step, and now the look the dead in the eye step is ready. And remember, all of this has to be done within 10 minutes in order to keep the round from changing. For some reason this step seemed to glitch out on me more than once. I don't know why this does this, but sometimes you just gotta roll with it. Right after this step is where you're shooting the shield into these little cog pieces. 
And you remember, you have to do all of this within 10 minutes, because as soon as that 10 minutes hits, the round's gonna change. And meanwhile, we have all these skeletons running around from the last step that I just did, that we can turn into other zombies that we can have for later rounds. And this is why I said earlier to make sure that you had that first level of the Hand of Gaia ready, because right after this step, you can go ahead and spawn in the big guy over at the Sundial area. You're going to need to kill him as quick as you can in order to get that staff to place down in the circle to start putting the electric zombies into that. As long as you can get a minimum of one electric zombie on that circle before the round changes, you'll be able to get the next two electric zombies that you need on round two. We found that on these low rounds, you're not going to get more than two electric zombies to spawn in on you. So even if you could find a way to beat the round flip from the Pegasus, I don't know if you can actually get three electric zombies on round one or even round two. See, we got the first electric zombie in already. Here comes the second one. And the round is about to flip it in a second here. Like I said earlier, all of the extra zombies that we made on round one, since we didn't kill them, are going to carry over onto this round two. And it's going to start us out with a whole bunch of zombies on the map. And as long as we don't kill below 24, the round's gonna hold. And so after you get this step done with the three electric zombies, the rest of the easter egg doesn't require any killing at all whatsoever. The beam step for Ra, if you fail the first step and don't kill anything, and then you start it up again, as long as you don't kill anything, none of the skeletons are gonna go block the beam which will let you do that entire step without having to kill anything at all. After that, you have the hit your mark step, and then you're just down putting the code in at the door, lining up the crossbow, and going to the boss fight on round two. here is we rounded up all the zombies just away from the amphitheater for the hit your mark so that we could stand on the circles without having to kill anything or having them all pile in on us. Set after hit your marks, you're putting the symbol in, doing that small cutscene, lining up the crossbow and shooting it with the wind fist, and you're on to the boss fight. 
Now there's a couple different ways that you can do this boss fight. In the four player games that we've ran, we actually haven't been able to do a single cycle on the Pegasus and boss, which means round eight on four players is what we got. But on three players, we were able to do a single cycle on the Pegasus and the main boss, which got us around six. Mortal pawns. You have served your purpose. Couple tips for the boss fight. When you stand in the fire, that's going to build your special meter up. And if you stand in the fire with your special meter, with your special weapon out, the XP for your special weapon is going to go up, so you can actually go from a level 1 to a level 3 in the boss fight really super fast, which is very helpful for this. change every time you down Pegasus, it's going to change after you kill Pegasus, and it's going to change after every time that you down the main boss. We've been able to do this whole boss fight with only flipping four rounds in a three player game, which is the absolute lowest you can do it, giving it a round six.
hope you guys found this useful and helpful. Any little bitch you should be knowing about. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one.